Hello, Captains. This is the Doctor. Welcome back to some more Let's Play Star Trek Online on the free-to-play edition. Uh, before we begin, I just want to say a big thank you to everybody who is watching this series and has stayed with it for this long and is still watching it. I know that we are now past 60 videos on this particular series uh, playing the Federation faction on Star Trek Online. And uh, it does take quite a while. It's a long series. There's a lot of missions in Star Trek Online. So I do appreciate uh, everybody who is continuing to watch. It is really, really cool. Um, I have gotten a lot of comments uh, from the last couple of videos where I said I wasn't going to open the special requisition pack Crinum Science Vessel that I got. Um, you, you guys are right. There's really no reason why I should wait to open this, I should. Uh, it will allow me to use it in the Admiralty system. So there's absolutely no reason to wait on opening this. I don't need to wait till level 60 like I said I was going to do. Uh, so what I'll do is at, after the uh, Breen storyline, before we start the next storyline, I will open the ship up and we'll just take a quick look at it. So we've got this mission and then the next mission and then I'll open the ship. Because you guys are right, there's really no point in waiting for that. Okay, today's mission is going to be Cold Case. Race the Breen in a hunt for information that stretches across the Aurelius sector block. You must return to Defera immediately. The Breen are searching for preserver technology. And they have once... They have... Well, that was loud. They have once again targeted the ruins near our city. I fear that more of my people will die, and with each death the balance shifts. These attacks need to stop. We are depending on you. Stop the Breen and keep the secrets of the Preservers safe from their treachery. And this will get another piece of our Breen space set, the uh, Impulse Engine. Okay. And we are at Tefera, so we can start the mission. Just gotta fly a little bit closer. There we go. All right, Captain, long-range scans confirm the Deferi Ambassador's suspicion. It appears that there is a portion of a star chart hidden in the ruins on the planet's surface. Something is interfering with the scans, though, so we can't pinpoint the location from here. An away team might be able to do surface scans in order to locate the star chart and retrieve it, but we will need to, to, uh, we will need to close to transporter range in order to beam down. Okay. Let us need to get to transporter range. Okay, now we can beam down. Captain, look down there. That ruined area is consistent with our records of potential preserver sites. If there really is a fragment of the star chart on this planet, there's a very good chance that that's where it would be. Hey, we were just there in the first episode of this series, or this uh, Reen Invasion storyline. Imagine that. It was there all along. Search the ruins for a star map fragment. Sir, I've just received updated data from the ship's computer. Apparently, this site closely resembles a preserver site in a Began system. The indigenous people there were able to access the site by performing a ritual. Records indicate that three people arranged themselves atop plinths, forming arrows to point east, then south, then southeast. And that's all the data I have. Okay. So this is a bit of a puzzle you have to figure out and if you step like in the middle it does that and if you step on each one of these it does that. I'm going to show you the quick way to do this. Um, first of all take your bridge officers tell them each to stand on one. And by doing this that will open up all of the possibilities to us. And now you stand in the middle, and now we just have to activate panels till we find the right one. 
Uh, it shouldn't take too long to do that. It's like, mm, no reaction there. No reaction there. So we go to that one. That, well, that one worked. So now we can back up and we should, one of these should do it. There, that did it. And we just got to find the next one. So it must be this. No, okay, uh, let's step back on it then. It's, it's one of these. There we go. Okay, that did it. And that's all you have to do for that. Captain, ship sensors are reporting multiple anomalous contacts. It may be the brain ships at long range. The transporter room is standing by to beam him up. Good. Let's set all our bridge officers back to normal and beam up. So that's how you do the star map, map fragment piece there. If you activate all the plinths, then uh, it's real easy to do that. There is a brain attack force converging on our position. They must have realized that we would be coming here for a part of the star chart. I'll bet they waited for us to do the work so they could swoop in and steal our data. Well, that's just not gonna work. Where are they? Sir, that's the last of them. Um, though with all this debris, I don't trust the sensors. I'll be happier once we're out of the area and back into open space. The computer has completed its analysis of the star chart, and there's an encoded marker indicating that the Shinga system is a significant location. Well, let's go there then. Shingo, it's way up here. Turn all the way around. Go into slipstream. And now we uh, wait till we get there. I like this mission because it's kind of like riding around, going to different places, like a, like a scavenger hunt or a treasure finding hunt or something like that. It's kind of fun. Coming up on it. Shinga. Continue. Captain, I am detecting gaseous anomaly on the far side of the planet. The line and navigational beacon should lead us right to it. That seems like a good place to start. Sure. Gaseous anomalies. That's what I'm good at. <laughs> I like this planet. It's really cool. The rings are going that way. Because of how we're positioned to the planet. It's space. It's three-dimensional. Unknown gas deposit. We've transported a sample of the gas to a containment chamber, but there is no record of anything with this molecular structure on record. It might be a synthetic compound or the byproduct of some as of yet known stellar phenomenon. Our science team staff is working on an, an analysis. I've got something. The preservers were known to encode data in the world around them, so I superimposed the molecular structure of the gas sample onto the orbital pattern of the system. It's a map, and it's pointing to something beneath the surface of that small moon. 
Recommend we approach and perform a level one submolecular scan to determine if there's anything of note there. Um, okay, let's go to that small moon over here. The scope and scale of this is just really cool. Oh, we're scraping the atmosphere. Unidentified moon. This is incredible. The interior of the moon is hollow, and it contains a vast geological orrery that, con that charts the heliocentric motions of everything in the solar system. The orrery suggests that there should be two large asteroids in this area, but I'm only reading one. Perhaps they collided in the millennia since the structure was created. I am, however, reading an energy source on the remaining asteroid, but it's buried deep in the rubble on the surface. If there was a collision, it is logical to assume that the rubble is all that remains of the second asteroid. We will need to remove the rubble to get a better reading of the energy source. Now we gotta turn around and go to an asteroid over here. So basically, that's an artificial moon that was constructed by the preservers. Very cool technology. And now there's something on this asteroid. Destroy the asteroid rubble. Am I even shooting it? There we go. Astonishing! Who knows how long this trail of breadcrumbs has been here, just waiting to be discovered. We should scan the star chart and add it to our existing fragment. Perhaps it will point the way to the next one. So we've got another star chart. Let's scan that. The computer has synthesized a new chart from our two fragmentary scans, Captain. Preliminary analysis indicates that whoever created these charts placed great significance on an L-class planet in the Manic system. Course plotted, plotted and standing by to engage on your command. Now we need to go to the Manic system. This is just like that episode TNG where Picard and uh, his friend were having to uh, run around the galaxy trying to figure out what all this... Um, what all this meant, tracking down the clues and everything. It was a really cool episode. That's how they came to find out about the preservers in the first place. Right, here we go. Another long load time. These always seem to get me. All we can do is wait. Okay, here we go. Captain, I'm detecting a Breen squadron dead ahead, but they're moving away from us at full impulse. They must already have what they came for, or else they'd be engaging us directly. The Breen aren't afraid of a fight. We can't let them get away with this information. Well, watch this. Breed 
green go? Bye bye. Sir, we have intercepted our transmission from one of the Breen ships. The message was unsecured. They must not have had time to encrypt it during the firefight. The message contains a fragment of the star chart. They must have retrieved it from the planet below before we arrived. For all we know, Breen ships could already be en route to the archive. I will begin analysis to determine our next location immediately. Synthesize updated star chart. Star chart analysis complete, and we've and uh, Captain, and we're headed to Rava 2. I just hope the Breen don't get there before we do. Well, let's hurry then and get there. Now we go back up to the top again where we just were to Rava 2. Now I can't slipstream, I have to wait. I do have Admiralty system stuff going, so collected one reward on that. No ships. Oh, there's two in maintenance. Come on, you can load. There you go. Scanners are picking up evidence of a running skirmish on the surface of the planet. It appears that the Breen are attacking an archaeological dig site. We'd better get down there as soon as possible if we don't want the Breen to escape with another piece of the star chart. Let's beam down. Come on, we can do it. A lot of long load times today for some reason. In fact, logging into the game was a long load time too. Must be having issues or something. Captain, take a look at these scans. The frozen rock face near the center of the crater shows signs of a hollow interior, and these readings are consistent with preserver power sources. There are multiple Breen life signs in the area, sir, and they're moving in a search pattern. They haven't found it yet, but it won't be safe to approach the site until we have subdued the guards. Engage the Breen! Now that's something I can get down with. Wait. We have three groups. We took care of one. Let's get this. Okay, final group.
Okay, destroy the cave wall. Very nice. Activate the preserver console. The brain threat has been con. con uh oh, we got the brain right here. We should take this stuff and find a way into the cave. Um. Guess what? I'd like to personally thank you for finding the final star fragment. I'd known you were going to ultimately prove useful. Perhaps I'd considered sparing your life. Of course, I'd have only. S Spared it up to this point anyway, so things would still have ended the same way. Still, considering all you've done to aid the Breen on their final goal, I might consider letting you and your officers live. Why not just beam back to your ship and run back to your Federation like a good Starfleet lapdog? If you wish to fall today, however, I am happy to help you. Why don't you think it over and give your answer to Thought Par? He's been dying to meet you ever since the defeat of Thought Gran. How about, uh, no. Enemy targets on Holy crap! We are all dead. All five of us are instantly dead from that cold weapon. Holy wow. Uh, calling for help ain't gonna help me now. <laughs> wow, I mean, we all died. Badly. That was terrible. There we go. That worked that time. All right, let's uh, scan the uh, star chart. Good, this might be the final piece of the star chart. We should scan it and then assemble it. Okay, assemble it. Yay, scanning and transmission are complete, Captain. I believe we can find the Preserver Archive with the information we have. And with luck, we'll get there before the Breen do. Standing by to beam up your, uh, the away team on your command. Cool, we've got the star chart. We can go find this archive. But that will be in the next episode, because that's the end of this one. Excellent work, Admiral. Our stellar cartography teams are looking at the star charts you recovered as we speak. It might take some time to completely compensate for stellar shift, but if we can pinpoint a location, I am confident that my government will authorize an expedition to find the Preserver Archive. All things in balance, and all things in time. Let's get our supercooled combat engine. All right. Very nice. Now we've got two pieces of the Breen set. Our space set we're going to take a look at. Let's compare the impulse engine with our current impulse engine. So the Breen has a plus 15 flight speed, efficient at lower power levels. That's higher than the Jem'Hadar engine. It has a 0.62 flight turn rate. That's lower than the Jem'Hadar engine. It does not have a plus five to weapon power. However, it does have a plus five to engine power, so it'll make us move a little faster. And it has all power to engines, it's just slightly faster. And thrusters, 25% speed when engines are disabled. It ha But the Jim Hadar engine gives a bonus weapon power when, when a bonus weapon power when the, when you are at a low weapon power. So the Breen does not do that. Jim Hadar engine actually sounds a little bit better. If we upgraded it to a Mark um, 11 or 12, it would be probably better than the Breen engine for our specific character. Uh, I like the idea of more weapon power, for example, plus five weapon power and then additional weapon power if weapon power is low. I like that. So I think the Jim Hadar engine is actually better than the Breen one for our particular build. Um, I can't upgrade it, you know, by by just doing this and... Well, I do have universal tech upgrades that I can use. And I guess I probably have enough dilithium. I could make it a Mark 11, I guess. But... That would increase the flight speed and the all-power engines. But 
For right now, I won't mess with it, but uh, we may look at that in the future. I think maybe keeping the Jim Hadar engine is better than the Breen engine. We'll see. Anyway, um, thank you guys for watching this episode. The next one's going to be cold uh, storage. We're going to go take a look at the Preserver Archive. So thank you for watching and stay tuned for the next one.